The title of this reading is A Sudden Realization. The next five months I spent in Midland, Texas were much better than the initial five months. But that's not before I went into one final breakdown that led to a couple days of minor psychosis, but ultimately to a deep realization that set me free from suffering in many ways. After five weeks of trying to keep it together through what felt like an outer body experience, the energy ramped up beyond what my psyche could handle. I returned from CrossFit one morning and was getting ready for work. As I was eating my breakfast, breakfast, things seemed fine. Fine being a loose term for something crazy is happening to me, but I think I can keep it going and, and kind of keep it together. Another day of waiting until whatever was going on with me to pass. Unfortunately, that's not what this particular day had in mind for me. As I walked outside to get in my car to go to work, I felt a huge wave of energy come over me. Suddenly, I was literally in a different realm of reality. What was once a semi-tolerable, albeit difficult reality to tolerate, instantly became an intense, fear-filled reality resembling a nightmare. I was in a borderline panic attack the entire day at work. I could barely speak to customers as my anxiety about the sudden surge of energy continued to escalate. I spent the next eight days at home, in bed or pacing around barefoot in the backyard. I was experiencing yet another but more intense psychotic bout of Kundalini Syndrome. The thing I remember most vividly is just the relentless nature of the energy. How for eight consecutive days, there were no periods day or night, where the energy would abate. It was set on breaking me for good this time. As my fear of what was happening continued to increase, my psychological conditions continued to worsen. I nearly stopped eating and sleeping altogether and lost 18 pounds in, in like a week. I was calling my mom every day, telling her I think I'd have to go to the psych ward any time now. By the seventh day, I was so broken and scared that I had my dad take me to the emergency room again. I was convinced I had a brain tumor or some, or some sort of neurological condition. I almost hoped I did because I just wanted an answer to what was happening with me. The emergency room wouldn't run an MRI on me without a neurologist's order. So I got in at the neurologist the next day and they sent me for an MRI right away. On the day, February 2nd, 2018, I went to get an MRI, and prior to going into the place where one gets an MRI, I writhed and cried and just suffered my way through another panic attack on the cement outside of the MRI center. I sat on the cement asking my mom to just take me to the ER down the street because I didn't know what was going on with me and I felt like I needed to be somewhere where I couldn't do harm to myself. The energy in my body was so overwhelming that I felt completely powerless and hopeless. I decided against the ER because I had already been three or four times in the last few months, not counting all the trips to the psychologist, psychiatrist, and a four-day stint at the detox facility, and nothing ever came out wrong with me. My problems were completely psychosomatic, but they were so real. Didn't anyone get it? I was suffering from something real and outside of my ability to understand or cope with. It was, lit it was literally killing me, burning me up from the inside 24-7. There was no escape, just constant and immense suffering. The day outside of the MRI place is where I felt like I had reached some sort of peak. It got to the point to where I couldn't take it any longer and I couldn't even blame myself because who could take what I was going through? When I got home that day, I told my mom to not be disappointed in me if I took my life. You have to understand that I've tried everything I told her and that I just cannot take this for one more second. When I saw in her face the exasperated understanding 
of my situation, it scared the shit out of me. Holy shit, I've actually suffered so much that my own mom understands that suicide is a reasonable option. In that moment of sheer terror, I just kept thinking, this can't actually be happening to me. I can't actually be this close to suicide, or even worse, the psych ward. I would have checked myself in somewhere that moment, but something in me just knew that pumping my body full of toxic pills wouldn't help anything and that I might never come back from it. But there I was, knowing full well that if suicide was as easy as pushing a button, I would have pushed it hundreds of times in the past five months. I had gone on to suicide assistance sites looking for the easiest and most efficient way to end my life hundreds of times. At one point, it was one of my, one of my most visited sites on my phone so that when I clicked on Google Chrome, it auto-filled as a favorite. I had researched assisted suicide in Oregon and realized that my situation didn't apply. I considered pills, but they weren't effective enough. People only succeeded 12% of the time. A gun. I actually visualized myself buying a gun and ending it somewhere in the West Texas desert countless times. My favorite fantasy was jumping off a very tall building. It seemed efficient and simple. I began researching the tallest buildings near me. Just writing this, I still can't believe that's where I was, but it was very real and now I know the depths of how low consciousness can go on a first-hand basis. So that night, after seeing the heartbreaking look of surrender on my mom's face and seeing the writing on the wall, I laid in bed and put on Ocean's Eleven. And as I laid in bed, I knew that the answer was to, to just stay alive, to not give up. If I ever made it out of this, I would be able to help people going through something similar. That became my purpose for survival. I literally took it one breath at a time. I laid there and took an eight second inhale through my nose and into my stomach and held for three seconds and then I exhaled for a count of 10 seconds out of my mouth. And I just did that over and over for hours until I fell asleep telling myself that I can just, I can just do this the rest of my life and never kill myself. I can survive this even if it is just one breath at a time. So the next day, it's February 3rd, 2018, and I wake up with a burst of inspiration and I am forcing myself to think positive all day and it's somewhat kind of working. I'm holding off crazy energy by constantly forcing myself to think positive, smoking a cigarette every 20 minutes and making laps around the neighborhood. I think, okay, I can do this. All I have to do is control my thoughts and not allow the negativity and anxiety to come up. I can just suppress it and I've got this beat. That day is okay and I don't feel all that great, but I'm not as bad as I think I'm. I'm not as bad as I've been and I think I'm making progress. And then comes that night. I can't sleep. I just can't. It's coming back hard. And this time, I know there's no suppressing it and there's no holding it back or controlling it with thoughts or anything, no matter how hard I try. I maybe sleep for two hours and the next day I feel like not only is life not worth living, but now I'm starting to have symptoms of psychosis, maybe even schizophrenia. I started becoming completely disconnected from reality. I couldn't think straight and I was having delusional thoughts and impulses. I thought for 100% sure now I'm going to the psychiatric ward and I really couldn't even think of a reason not to. I just remember the pain. The pain of losing my mind was just so unbearable. I had gotten to the point to where I wasn't even competent enough to carry out a suicide. And that thought was absolutely terrifying. Oh my God, I thought. I am so gone and sick that I can't even get out of this if I wanted to. I am trapped. I remember sitting outside that day as my mom and sister were working on plants in the backyard, wondering what was happening to me. And if they could know what was going on inside of me, how incredibly scared they would be for me. 
But after the day before, when I was looking to be a little more recovered, I didn't want to ruin anyone's Super Bowl Sunday for no reason, because there was absolutely nothing they could have done for me had they known how psychotic I was becoming. When my parents left for the Super Bowl party at my sister's house, I just sat there on the couch feeling like this was it. But something came into me and said, you know what, if I have severe mental illness, then I have severe mental illness, but I'm going to figure this out. It was then that I opened my phone and found this Calm Down Mind article, I have it linked. It talked about how all we are is energy, dark and light energy, and all illness, physical and mental, is due to an energetic imbalance. And whatever you fully allow can never be overwhelming. It is only what we, we resist that feels overwhelming. The knowledge that I had been resisting for five months, probably more like my entire life, came rushing into me like a tidal wave. I am getting tremendous goosebumps right now just typing about it. I had been fighting and struggling and suppressing and running from all of the crazy feelings and energy that had taken over my body for the last five months, that they had continued to build and intensify until I was finally on my knees in desperation for a release. Something inside of me clicked. I finally got it. It took me to get to that point to really surrender and to allow all of those emotions and thoughts and feelings just to come rushing up to the surface to be released. I laid on the couch and opened to the feelings and the burning energy and just let them overtake me. I didn't fight how I was feeling. I let the feelings wash through me in all of their intensity. It was then that I realized how powerful I was. I had, I had just openly embraced and faced all of the feelings that I had been terrified of and running from for the last five months. I had this unshakable knowing that my life was forever changed. I had finally surrendered, and so the long road of healing began. My intention in reading these blogs is to give those who will find connecting with my story and my content helpful another option and opportunity to find me. If you would like to support this intention, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can like and share this video, and you can also sign up to be on my email list on my website at kundaliniDiaries.com.